So Jake, um, so glad to have you here today. Thanks for agreeing to come and talk to us. It's always fun to talk to you. Um, for our audience, I want to take a minute and introduce our, our guest, uh, Jake Hirsch-Allen. So Jake currently serves as the North America Workforce Development and Higher Ed System Lead at LinkedIn, um, supporting the LinkedIn Learning Solutions public sector collaboration with workforce development, employment, community college, and higher education systems. Um, Jake, you have such an interesting background. You also founded Lighthouse Labs, uh, Vancouver's first immersive coding school, and you work with partners in Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, really bringing together the, the uh, software development community across um, Canada. So you previously also served for nine years as legal counsel with Cobalt Lawyers. Um, and you um, graduated from the University of Toronto, and I just love your background. So international relations, get that. Archetypical mythology, questions about that. And later earned your JD at McGill um, University. Um, so welcome, Jake. Um, LinkedIn, you know, provides online learning solutions really for more than 12,000 corporate clients last I last I saw across the private, public, and education sectors. And Jake, you guys, 78% um, of the Fortune 100 companies are LinkedIn learning customers, which is pretty impressive. Um, you work with countries in over 100 um, countries, and over half of the top 100 global universities use LinkedIn learning. So that's a pretty nice footprint. Um, Congratulations. I can't take much credit for that, but thank you. <laughs> so for those of you just joining, I'm Deb Giordano. I'm Vice President of Service Delivery and just delighted to welcome who I just introduced, Jake Hirsch Allen with LinkedIn Learning. So Jake, I just kind of talked about your resume. I'd, I'd like you to help us tie that all together. The archetypical mythology really has me going, but I don't know. It's one of my favorite questions to ask of anyone is, Tell me about your career journey, um, because Happy I to. find that so interesting. So to share to. a little bit with us, how'd you get I'll, I'll here? Try, I'll try not to talk about myself too much during this conversation, but this is the one <laughs> window where I think I'm probably forced to. So thank you for the opportunity. And then honestly, thank you for having me um, on live at the forum as well. This is such an incredible community and, and Equus plays such a central role in it that I'm excited to be a part of the conversation. Um, my background, you're right, is weird. When I first joined LinkedIn at our 15,000 person all hands, they said I was the weirdest hire they've ever made. And that <laughs> I think includes because I've done everything from defending more criminals in Cambodia to starting software boot camps here in Canada. Uh, but honestly, the, the story that ties the whole thing together is around social impact. And I think starting with a story is important because as you mentioned, I did my undergrad in archetypal mythology. And basically that complex word simply means or phrase simply means the fundamental narratives that underlie our lives, the stories that we all know from the Romeo and Juliet complex to the Odyssey. And my Odyssey has really been about how to get from one person learning about the world to creating a social impact at as large a scale as possible. I started that out in access to medicine. So I went from international criminal law to intellectual property law, worked on a bunch of access to medicines work before moving into the current stage of my career, which really has been focused on access to education, primarily online, doing everything from working with Gordon Brown on something called the Global Education Platform, which is trying to figure out how to get online learning to work for disadvantaged populations seven, eight years ago, which seems somewhat uh, prescient uh, when one thinks about the impact that online learning is happening during this pandemic. And then more recently joining LinkedIn and spending a fair bit of time working both with higher education institutions across Canada and now with workforce development institutions across the United States and Canada. Exactly. Wow. You know, um, that's just such a fascinating journey and you pulled it together beautifully. And, um, and I've asked you that question before one-on-one -on -one, and it really is just um, fascinating how you have found a way to really bring together all of those areas of knowledge and passion and really make a difference. So thanks, Jake. Um, you know, you and I, we met each other some time ago, but we haven't been able to connect recently. 
Um, sure. And that's because uh, Equus has been engaged in uh, a procurement, actually, for online learning systems. And uh, your organization, uh, LinkedIn Learning, was part of a response. And I'm really excited to uh, announce today that LinkedIn Learning through Kerasoft was um, awarded uh, a contract with Equus Workforce Solutions. We're still, this is very fresh, very new. We're, we're still working through um, details and you have people and I have people and they're all working through all those things and we're pulling together an implementation plan. But we're looking to um, roll out the LinkedIn Pro um, we have contracted with you for an enterprise-wide license across all of our operations. So if you out there listening uh, work with us, you're going to benefit from this new fantastic partnership with LinkedIn uh, very soon. And so tell us a little bit, Jake, about what we're going to be doing together. Absolutely. I couldn't be more excited. This is by far the largest workforce development LinkedIn learning rollout we've ever um, undertaken and we're super excited to be working with uh, an incredible partner in Equus. The uh, challenge to date for LinkedIn in achieving really our vision, which I think aligns extraordinarily closely with Equus vision, has been that it's hard for us to access a lot of the populations to serve a lot of the populations that aren't necessarily thinking about LinkedIn as the first place to go to either learn or find a job you know, represent themselves, build a profile, et cetera. And yet your organizations do exactly that. And so the ability to partner with an organization that has career counselors or navigators leading individuals through how to represent themselves online, how to begin to look for jobs online, and then ideally to learn skills via LinkedIn Learning and LinkedIn Learning Pro, as you said, is in our, at least in my, and I think our broader a collective vision exactly in line with where we wanted to go with this platform. And it could it, it comes at probably the most uh, important time in the history, certainly of my life uh, during this pandemic, when individuals need to be learning at home, you know, when they have to be making the most of this challenging time to actually upskill so that they can rebound out of this pandemic stronger. Great. You know, I think probably many of our listeners uh, are aware that you have a learning platform, but some may not be. How on earth did LinkedIn end up in, in the learning space? It's, it's remarkable, actually, how frequently people don't know about LinkedIn Learning, considering it is now, as you mentioned, <laughs> the largest online learning platform. And yet there's obviously many out there. And uh, one of the more exciting days of my life recently was the second day on my job at LinkedIn when we announced the acquisition of lynda.com. Uh, which at that point was already the top skills focused learning platform mm -hmm. online. But what transformed it was the addition of LinkedIn's economic graph, our insights, our data, our labor market information spanning everything from the 675 million members on the platform and what's on their profiles to the tens of millions of jobs that are on the platform coming from everything from our own labor market information, companies posting jobs and listing skills associated with them so we can verify the skills on a person's profile, but also from other sources. So for instance, we've had a long-term collaboration with the National uh, Labor Exchange, which actually I think parallels our work with NOB and your work with NOB. And uh, as a result of that collaboration, we actually have all the public jobs on our platform too. And all of those are informing which courses we build and which courses are recommended to your end users. So if somebody walks into an Equus One Stop, they're gonna be able to access both the flagship LinkedIn platform and advice on how to use it to get a job, but now even more valuably, the 16,000 courses that we have spanning everything from project management to how to write a resume, entrepreneurship to advanced tech skills. That's fantastic. And you know, Jake, I just really, want to um, give kudos to LinkedIn Learning that I know recently released uh, 30 days free access to the LinkedIn diversity and inclusion. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it's titled, um, kind of suite of courses, but um, you know, just thank you, uh, recognizing that that is something that everyone is really trying to learn more about. So just appreciate how much LinkedIn um, recognizes um, kind of it's it's responsibility to the greater good right of the of the Absolutely. communities and the times so how do you um at linkedin learning make sure that you are um putting out the the latest and greatest um uh content out there talk a little bit about that i know last year if i recall in the in the proposal you submitted in 2019 there was something like 2000 
um, courses developed. So talk a little Every bit about year. that process. Exactly. Right. Yeah, happy to speak to that. Uh, and in fact, you know, today is a big day for announcements on multiple fronts for us. We just did a huge announcement with Brad Smith and our CEO around skills, and it parallels perfectly the announcement between LinkedIn Learning and Equus because it's focused on upskilling post-pandemic and specifically using that labor market information to recommend the courses and to build the courses um, that are most relevant today. So what we do is we basically analyze which skills are most in demand, and then we bring in experts from whichever organization is best at teaching those skills. And so it combines the expertise and the pedagogical ability to teach. And so we'll fly in somebody from Microsoft or from Adobe, from SHRM or from CompDIA, from the Project Management Institute or the CPA, and they will teach accounting or project management, marketing or Android, and they'll teach them in the largest film studios north of Hollywood. So one of the most fun times in my career was to be able to walk into these literally football field sized film studios in Southern California. I think they're the largest studios north of California, um, or I should say north of Hollywood. and you go in and you see where they make the magic happen, as they say, which is to say the, the experts are there scripted in a manner that is uniform so that all of our content is curated and it comes across in a consistent manner. It's completely accessible. Right. So if you have a disability, you have all of the various technologies to allow you to either read it or listen to it, interact with it in, in a variety of forms. Uh, and I think one of the amazing things for the population we're trying to serve right now is it even works offline. So you can take those videos and download them to your phone and walk away to somewhere where you might not have you know, high speed broadband and still watch and learn from home in that way. So you're starting to talk um, to touch on my next question. And that is, you know, I learned a little bit about your product and your three core elements, which are content, curation and convenience. So can you talk a little bit about each of those three and yeah, what that happy means? To. And I think we've, so we've already talked a bit about the content part. Uh, and I think, so maybe I'll put that aside and we can always circle back to what content's gonna be most relevant for your audience. On the curation side, I think that's incredibly valuable. So the ability to add skills to your profile, add skills that you're interested in on LinkedIn Learning, and then have recommendations come in based on those skills. So what you're interested in, what you already know, what you've demonstrated an interest in on LinkedIn in general, and then also have curated content. So Equus will have curriculums in some places that are specific to that location based on our collaborating on labor market information around what's in demand from which companies. Well, we'll put together different videos and courses into a learning pathway, much like the 10 that were just announced by Microsoft and us. And those will again be specific to that geography. They could even have say a local employer speaking to uh, the uh, new hires that they've brought in from an Equus one stop and their experience that could be commingled with contents, again, specific to skills in demand in that geography. And then I think, honestly, the convenience piece is pretty huge. The fact that most individuals are able to navigate LinkedIn means that they're also able to navigate LinkedIn Learning. This is about as user-friendly as software gets. And it's also, as I said before, as accessible as software gets. It meets the highest international standards of accessibility. And we couldn't be more excited to broaden the workforce to include a much more diverse group of potential workers with Equus. That's fantastic. So let's talk about accessibility just a little bit. Um, this is your content is available in multiple languages. Is that it accurate? Is. Yep, seven yes. languages uh, as we speak, and uh, hopefully more to come. Great. So um, we're just getting started on this new partnership, Jake. So not that this is an implementation call or anything, but <laughs> um, as you think about the opportunities. Um, from your perspective, what are the possibilities here? I think they're huge, honestly. The fact that we have the brick and mortar and reach across almost every state that Equus has in terms of the ability to support the most disadvantaged populations in America, and now we're talking you know, 20 to 30% of the population in some states, and at the same time, the technological innovation that LinkedIn and Microsoft can, can bring to that equation. And Equus obviously was already a thought leader in technological innovation in the workforce space in a variety of other ways. So the fact that we can plug into those systems in a relatively seamless manner, I mean, you were suggesting an integration call, 
thankfully, we barely have to be involved in that process because we have teams that are already doing that as we speak. And I think the much more interesting and impactful part of this conversation is going to be about how LinkedIn Learning is built into the local programs within a given one stop, within a given workforce board, and how we work together to make those as innovative as possible, ensuring that individuals have access to that job search, to that skills development while they're at home and tailored to who they are and the opportunities in their geography. Great. You know, we talked about the breadth and depth of, of your user base. I think you have, what, 23 million or something LinkedIn crazy learning users. LinkedIn learning users. So let's talk about that immense data you have. And, and you've touched on it some throughout. But how can our partnership and others like it, because you work with various states and economic development and chambers, and you guys are everywhere, um, and not just, you know, across countries all over the place. How can our partnership and others like it leverage that data to help our communities to really bring it to the community level, upskill and connect workers and business? Happy to, happy to jump into it on a few specific examples. I think generally getting back to that idea of a story, the, the stories of success are often what stick in people's minds and also which help us understand some of these rather complex labor market information or economic graph complex, uh, co sorry, ideas, but at the um, level of an individual user going through the system. And so one of my favorite examples actually comes from my early days at LinkedIn, when we worked with uh, the city here where I live in Toronto to figure out how do you get people early in their careers into a job fast in tech in Toronto. We wanted to be really specific. And what we were able to do is pull the list of the most in-demand skills that year, in fact, that month, and without us even knowing it, the mayor was there, the head of the largest bank, the head of United Way, somebody from a community college took a screen cap of that list and they built out a whole set of courses. So now there's 14 boot camps funded by the government, all focused on those in-demand skills. And every graduate from one of those programs over the past four years has gotten a job. It's that ability to tailor the skills to what's in demand in a given place. And that's probably the most obvious example, but a couple other stories that might help. We've been able to look at migration patterns. So you can see when individuals are moving into an area or out of an area with a specific skill set, and then tailor your training accordingly, even looking at learning pathways or career pathways. So why is it that, for instance, a lot of the Syrian bricklayers, we have a lot of refugees up in Canada who are Syrian bricklayers, why is it that they're particularly good delivery workers? Or I think you and I have joked in the past about how bartenders make really good 911 call center responders. You need big data, you need a computer to analyze the overlap right. in the skills between somebody who loves, you know, talking to lots of people and serving them lots of drinks and figuring out what's going on, but also has a passion for social impact and can switch gears and then use that exact same skill set, but maybe add on a few skills using LinkedIn learning and Equus support, and then move into a role as a call center responder. Um, I think those are sort of the kinds of transitions that a combination of our data, our content, and your incredible operations will, will bring to a whole new set of individuals across America. You know, just listening to you and I'm sure our audience members who are listening and their heads are spinning on that too, because as our last speaker said, this is the year of the pivot. And so the, the power of data in helping us pivot quickly because it's really important. So, you know, understanding transferable skills, you know, we've honestly as an industry known about the importance of that and, and, and done that and attempted to do it in sometimes um, better ways than others. I wouldn't say we've nailed that really well as an industry. So Agreed. I'm just incredibly excited um, to think about just the possibilities for how we can and how needed this is at this time in this totally. space right now. I mean, you know, I mean, even yeah, go uh, ahead. I can jump in with another example if it's helpful, because I think entrepreneurship is perhaps the perfect example of what you're describing, a pivot. And it doesn't necessarily have to take the form of creating a new business. I'm part of this organization called the League of Intrapreneurs, who are all about changing organizations from within. But irrespective, that idea of innovating, of creating, of bootstrapping with fewer resources in some cases, but more opportunities, right? A whole new world or a portal into a different world. That I think is going to be seized by particularly the populations that we serve. And what we have to do is then enable them in that moment with the skills, with the opportunities, so understanding what the potential career pathways or business opportunities are. And then once they have that, 
they and we together can, can rebuild these economies um, stronger. And I think what's really interesting about the, the collaboration between you and us is it's an example of the kinds of creative and innovative partnerships that will result in that innovation, i.e. when higher education gets together with workforce development, when the public sector gets together with the private sector, when employers partner more closely with Equus, that's when you end up with a labor market that is much more productive and inclusive, and I'm excited to build that together. Great. Well, Jake, I want to give you a chance to, to wrap up with any other comments that you have for the audience, whether it's about our partnership or about some really exciting, um, anything you want to share related to LinkedIn learning, and even how people might be able to reach out if they'd like to learn more. So. Absolutely. Um, so the easiest way to reach me, of course, is on LinkedIn. Feel free to add me at Jake Hirsch Allen <laughs> on LinkedIn. I'm really easy to find. And just let me know that you saw me here because it'll allow me to filter through the requests. Also, we're rolling out in every state that Equus is rolling out as a result of this partnership. So if you're in one of those states where there's already a relationship, definitely don't hesitate to reach out either to Equus or to us and say, hey, we're interested in LinkedIn Learning. We want to know how to build it into your program uh, with us. We want to understand how we can benefit from the skills, the online learning, even the networking and jobs that are available on LinkedIn better via Equus. And so don't hesitate either to reach out to the local Equus teams, me personally, or, or LinkedIn more generally. And I look forward to working together. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jake. It's such a delight having you here today.